name, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Well, this topic, it says in the title, is um, Sacraments in the Time of COVID, Some Reminders from Our Mother, the Church. And I deliberately put in that uh, phrase, Mother, the Church, in order to remind us that our church is really like a mother. Okay. Because I know many of us are worried, troubled by the fact that we have not gone to uh, Mass in the parish for weeks. We have not been able to go to confession. We have not been able to um, celebrate uh, Holy Week the way we have always done. Um, I know many people go to confession to prepare for Easter. Many would... Um, do, um, I mean, make sure that they're able to attend the liturgical rites and all this we didn't get to do during this um, season, this time. Um, well, it's true, these are trying times for everyone, not just for us, but for everyone. Many are suffering. Many have died by the thousands and worse is died alone. Many of them could not even be given proper burial uh, with their loved ones. Many died with their loved ones not even allowed to see them, to be close to them. Um, but we're alive. So we still have more things to thank God for in spite of the sufferings, the difficulties that um, many are going through. I know many are affected financially, even psychologically, uh, spiritually, physically. I mean, really, this is like no other experience. I mean, we've not seen anything like this in the past. And so at times like this, it should be our faith that will sustain us. God's love and mercy, that is what will get us to do all these things. Now more than ever, we have to rely on God's love, God's providence, God's care. And let us not forget that. Maybe this, this is the reminder the world badly needs right now. The world that had become so materialistic, commercial, um, um, running here and there, living a fast pace for earthly goods, for riches, Maybe this is God's way of, uh, I mean, he is not the cause <laughs> of this virus. He has allowed this, maybe because many good things can come out of it. And one of the good things that should come out of this situation we find ourselves now is the realization that we need God. We are not supermen. <laughs> we are not uh, special. We are vulnerable. We are weak. And maybe for some people, this is the only time they started praying again. Maybe for some people, this is the time when they realized again, they cannot do without God. We need God. So times like this, it is only our faith that can sustain us. Some people ask, why God? Why did you allow this? Why do you allow this? Well, uh, um, in fact, it's a wrong question to ask. We have to remember that when God created the world in the book of Genesis, we are told God saw that it was good. He created the world good. It is we men, our sins, that have made it evil. Evil came into the world because of sin. When man disobeyed, when our first parents disobeyed God. Why? Out of pride. Out of greed. Maybe even out of lust, um, when they were told that uh, if you eat of this fruit, you will become like God. And that's lust for power, lust for, uh, um, well, thinking that they could be like God. So that's when evil came into the world. That's when sickness came into the world, when man abused creation. They say that the virus originated from bats. Well, it's not God who ate the bats. <laughs> it's man who made food out of the bats. That's how 
we have the virus now. So the virus is transmitted because some people refuse to follow restrictions. In the US, there are people who even hold rallies um, that, because they want their freedom back. They don't want the lockdown. They want the, the, there are some girls carrying a placard. We want our prom. We want our prom. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's absurd. So uh, virus is transmitted because of us, because of men, because of um, un, uh, unbridled desire for uh, freedom. Don't blame God. I mean, that's why it's a wrong question to ask, why God? Why do you do this? No, it's we men are the cause of all these things. Um, so, but even more punishing, I know um, the, the lockdown is, um, is bearable if only they can have their sacraments, if only they can have their mass, if only they can have the Eucharist, uh, etc. I know many people who suffer more because of that. The, the other things can be um, tolerable, but they suffer more because of being deprived of the sacraments. So many of us, many of you have been relying on online mass, live streaming mass. Um, many of you have been deprived of confession. I know many of you go try to go on a regular basis, uh, once every two weeks, once a month, and even that, we are deprived. That's why it's good to answer uh, those questions. What does the church say about uh, live mass, internet mass? Today, I did not get to follow the mass online, on TV. Am I sinning? Is that a sin? Am I um, failing to do my obligation uh, to God? So it's good to know the answer to these things. Okay. Um, but before we get into the answers of those things, here are some important things to keep in mind. Our God is a God of love and mercy. God is not uh, simply a lawmaker. Our God is not just a just God who punishes the wicked and rewards the good. Yes, he is that. He is just. He, but more than that, he is a God of love and a God of mercy. And therefore, um, we should not be troubled about this. Oh no, I have not gone to Sunday Mass for the last four weeks. Uh, am I Well, God is a God of love and mercy. He knows our situation. He is not uh, disappointed with us and here's the answer to that question but I didn't get to follow online even if the, the law of uh, the commandment of God is uh, remember keep holy the Lord's day and for us Catholics the way we keep holy the Lord's day is we go to mass now if one day you are sick and you cannot get out of bed uh, you have a terrible headache, that moment you are not able to go to Mass, you are not sinning. But I didn't get to follow the Mass on, on the TV. Even if you don't follow the Mass on TV, you are not sinning by not being able to go to Mass because physically it's just impossible. And right now we are in this special uh, times, irregular times even, you can say, unusual times when we cannot even get out of our house because we obey the um, ordinances of the, of the country. Okay, we are not committing a sin. Even if you don't get to follow the Mass online or on TV, we do that as a way of uh, keeping the Lord's Day holy, helping us to be able to... Um, uh, worship God in the way that we can, but that is not the commandment. I mean, the commandment is not that we have to replace uh, being able to go to Mass with following it online, okay? It's a good thing, um, and that's why, you know, the Pope was one of the very first to actually say, I will uh, stream my Mass, my daily Mass, 
he started it something like March uh, 7 or something like that. One of the very first to even decide uh, people are not able to go to Mass. So uh, my daily Mass, I will stream it live to help people. Uh, but it's not in place of uh, fulfillment of the commandment of God. But it's just um, to help us. And of course, it, it's a very great help that when we follow the Mass online, we are able to express very clearly, even physically, that desire to receive our Lord. That's spiritual communion, which that uh, at following the Mass online is one way, but that's not the only way. We can actually just also recite a prayer expressing to God, Lord, I really want to receive you. I cannot because of the situation, but I want to receive you the way your mother received you, with that same humility, with that same devotion. So that's one of the things we have to keep in mind. God is a loving Father. He wants our salvation. He is not just um, a strict judge who imposes rules on us. Those rules, those um, commandments of the church, the Ten Commandments of God, are there to guide us, to help us uh, reach our salvation. But you see, the end is still that union with God forever with him in heaven to get to heaven. Our faith is not just a list of rules. It's very sad, you know, when sometimes I meet uh, um, young people, teenagers, who will say things like, um, in the Catholic Church, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. There's this um, prohibition. Our religion, our faith is not just a list of do's and don'ts. Our faith, our religion is a religion of love. How do we get to heaven? By loving God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. That's the answer he gave to that uh, rich young man who asked him, um, Master, how can I get to heaven? How can I be saved? And our Lord's answer was that, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and your neighbors as yourself. Then that's what will bring us to our salvation. It's not, uh, you should not do this, you should not do that, you cannot, thou shalt not, uh, thou shalt, no. Um, our um, ticket to salvation is that we have God in our heart, with all our heart, with all our soul, we love him. Okay? Our religion is a religion of love, of mercy, of charity. Jesus did not establish his uh, church simply to impose rules. He established his church out of love. That's why Sometimes in some documents, um, you will uh, read the Catholic Church being referred to as the spouse of Christ, the bride of Christ. And then Jesus is referred to as the, the bridegroom. That's about love. That's all about love. That's what, uh, what Jesus established the church for. So... Again, I repeat, be at peace these days that you are not able to go to the sacraments. Um, do not lose um, your um, serenity because God is a God of love, a God of mercy. He knows our situation and uh, he is not angry at us that we are not able to, to go and attend Mass. Of course, we look forward to being able to go back to church, being able to attend Mass again, being able to receive our Lord again, uh, not just spiritually, but uh, really physically, receiving the host with his body, blood, soul, and divinity. We look forward to that. And now that we are in this situation where we are deprived of the sacraments, we should be resolving, um, I have to love the sacraments more, the Eucharist in a special way, realizing now 
that uh, I I cannot even receive him. And yet there were so many times in my life in the past when I could have, but I did not. Maybe because I could not put it in my schedule. Maybe because I was too busy with the activities here and there. But um, what we had to do is to make sure that uh, once we have the possibility again to tell our Lord, Lord, I have to take advantage of the fact that I can receive you. And never more, never more will I um, underestimate you know, the beauty, the greatness of being able to receive you um, in communion. And then during these days, um, we have to make sure that uh, we pray more than ever. Now we cannot give us an excuse, I'm busy. Now we cannot give us an excuse, I have no time. Because we do have time. Um, and so during these days, we can make sure, we have to make sure that we are able to spend time praying, praying a lot, praying for ourselves. But don't just pray for yourself. Pray especially for those who are suffering, for those who are dying, who have died, and for their families who are deprived of the opportunity to even be close to their loved ones when they pass away. And then for those who are taking care of them, the nurses, the doctors, the frontliners. And we are very lucky because the um, on... Um, March uh, 20, the Apostolic Penitentiary issued a decree granting plenary indulgences to the faithful suffering, to the family members and all those who in any capacity um, helping the, um, the victims, to the healthcare workers, and then um, including them to do prayer and caring for them. So, uh, this is like a great bonus for us. We can gain plenary indulgence just, for, just by praying for the, um, the sick, those who are taking care of them, the, 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 the ones who have died, and then to pray that this pandemic once and for all will be over sooner than later. Um, Plenary indulgence is not forgiveness of sins. It's a remission, it's a removal of all punishments attached to sin that we have committed in the past, which we may have already confessed. Because what happens is when a person uh, commits a mortal sin and then goes to confession, the mortal sin is forgiven, but that leaves a certain, like you can say, a scar that we have to pay for either here on earth through indulgences, through prayers and sacrifice, or in purgatory. Now, plenary indulgences means when we gain one plenary indulgence, all the temporal punishment that we would have deserved, um, all of them are removed. And that's why it's a very good uh, start. It's like uh, having a clean slate once again. And when a person dies after receiving validly a plenary indulgence um, and he still has, let's say, some small sins to make up for, but because of that plenary indulgence, he goes straight to heaven. He does not have to uh, pass through purgatory. And that's the meaning of this plenary indulgence, which the um, Apostolic Penitentiary, an office in the Vatican, issued on March 20, saying that those who suffer and those who pray for them and those who assist them can gain plenary indulgence. So during these days, we can gain plenary indulgence. And uh, normally, to gain a plenary indulgence, we should go to confession and receive communion. But because of the situation, those two things are not there. Um, it's enough that we pray um, the Our Father, for example, 
and then a prayer to Our Lady, and then spiritual communion, and then um, prayer for the person and intentions of the Pope. And that's it. You can say, wow, this is a bonus. It's so easy now to gain plenary indulgence and many plenary indulgences throughout the day. And that's what we can work for during these days to make sure that we are able to take advantage of this opportunity to gain many, many plenary indulgences. And then lastly, um, we are talking of, uh, well, while the title is Sacraments in the Time of COVID, it's really faith in the time of COVID. The Holy Father wrote a letter for all the Catholic faithful for the month of May where he invites everyone to pray the rosary with special devotion and then even recommending that we offer two prayers, two specific prayers to Our Lady that we can recite at the end of the rosary after the litany. Okay, so uh, let's obey the um, um, wishes of the Holy Father. Let us um, find ways and means that during this month of May, we can pray even better as a family, the rosary. Remember, uh, the rosary is a very powerful prayer. Mary has won battles throughout history of mankind. There's a battle of Lepanto. There's the Edsa Revolution in the Philippines where we faced tanks and soldiers of uh, the Marcos dictatorship carrying rosaries and images of Our Lady and flowers. No? That's how we faced uh, the um, quote-unquote enemy during that time. Mary is a very powerful intercessor for us because she is the mother of God. And being the mother of God, whatever she asks for from God, from our Lord, God cannot say no. God cannot say no. Uh, and so with that confidence, we run to her in a special way this month of May to do the powerful uh, weapon we have, which is the rosary. So reading from the letter of um, the Holy Father, I'm also, uh, dear brothers and sisters, contemplating the face of Christ with the heart of Mary, our mother, will make us even more united as a spiritual family and will help us overcome this time of trial. I keep all of you in my prayers, especially those suffering most greatly, and I ask you to please pray for me. Um, this is a beautiful, quote-unquote, burden that the Holy Father has put on us, that we will be able to win this um, trying moments, this uh, what many have called the invisible enemy, the, the virus. We will be able to defeat it through the powerful uh, weapon that we have, which is the Holy Rosary of Our Lady. And so um, every day during this month of May, we can resolve that we will pray the Rosary. I know some people who would even, because they have time, more time these days, they would even recite also the other parts of the rosary. If on, if on Monday, it's the joyful mystery, they will also find a way of being able to recite the sorrowful, the luminous, the glorious mystery, sometime through the day, uh, because they have time. And um, with confidence, with confidence. Remember, when you go to Our Lady, this is the same woman because of whom Jesus turned water into wine even if his time had not yet come. Remember, that's what Jesus said. What is it to me, woman? My time must not yet come. But because Mary was the one who asked for it, he performed the miracle. Remember, when you go to Mary, this is the very same lady who made the sun dance on uh, October 13, 1917, in Fatima, Portugal. You remember that time? When Mary appeared to the three children on May 13, June 13, July 13, August, and September 13. And then um, the three children 
um, Francisco Jacinta Lucia told Mary, Mary, people are asking for a sign. Show them a sign so that they will believe. And Mary told them, okay, on October 13, when I see you, when I visit you for the last time, I'm going to show them a sign. And that's why 70,000 people gathered in uh, that um, um, grazing field in Portugal, in Fatima. 70,000. And the whole night, it was raining. The day before, it started raining up to 12 noon when the... Um, um, when, when Mary appeared to the three children. And so the ground was wet. Everything was wet. The, the people who were there, 70,000 of them, were all soaking wet. And then at a certain point when the three children were already talking to Mary, uh, it was Lucia who told Mary, Mary, what about the sign that you promised? And at that moment, Mary pointed to the sun and the... Um, Clouds open because remember I said it was raining and it so it was dark. It was uh, very cloudy, covered uh, with dark clouds. But the clouds opened and the sun appeared and suddenly people saw the sun turning into different colors. First it was bright yellow. It turned gold and then orangish and then white and the uh, and then it started looking like um, the. Um, moving from left to right it started looking like it was getting big and people started running around thinking that it was the end of the world and then in a moment it stopped and everything was dry the ground was dry the clothes that they were all soaking wet just a moment ago were all dry uh, witnessed by seventy thousand. And scientists, scientists later would say, for something like that to happen, very, very wet, and then in a very um, short moment, everything dry, you need a, um, like, um, a bomb stronger than what was dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki to make that happen. Something that was so totally wet to immediately something totally dry. That's Our Lady. She had to show that sign in order to convince people that it is me. And remember, there in Fatima, the, what was the message of Our Lady? Well, repent for so many sins. And then confession. And then Eucharist. And then rosary. 